Hey, it's Walter Van Dusen. We are in Lexington, Massachusetts, and I just wanted to announce that my new audio for 2025 is by Sarah Monix. new Cinemonic T9 that has built-in time code in these, in the transmitters, receiving a time code from my Atomos time code generator. I'm able to take off uh, the audio input from the mic, and I put the time code in, receives time code, so these two mics are time code to my Atomos Shogun Ultra. It is now 1857.56, and this time code is the same. You can have 32-bit float. My voice is loud. I need 32-bit float. So this, this is the new Ceremonic K9 out on location uh, where I live. I went in this little walkway with built-in, we have 32-bit float audio going into the two uh, transmitters internally by a micro SD card which is ba ba based inside. The takes two AA batteries, and underneath the two AA batteries, there's a slot that you could put in your micro uh, SD card, which is kick butt. One of the things I want to mention is the transmitter. It has two screens, one on top, and then on the transmitter, it has one so as the talent can see your audio games, which I think is pretty phenomenal. So this is my newest audio the Ceremony K9 with onboard timecode receivers, not generators, but the receivers, receiving timecode from my Atomos, or you can do Tentacle or DD, whatever timecode you have, the Ceremony K9s can receive timecode. On my Atomos Shogun Ultra, that is generating the timecode to all of my timecode generators, which I have three, one going to the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3, one going to my FX6, and the other one on the side of the Shogun that I, I am able to use as a generator to go to this. That's also receiving time code. The Ceremony K9s, which are absolutely amazing and currently is now going to be my audio because when you're on your audio learning journey, you realize if you're really loud like me, you have to have 32-bit float. 32-bit float is like capturing still photography in RAW. So you, you, so if you don't have, this is, as you can see, this is 24-bit. So if my voice is up here, I, I would be blowing out my gains. But 32-bit float is way up here. So, so say up here times two. So I can be really loud. Basically, 32-bit float, in some cases allows you to be like near a jet the, and you can bring back that audio or I'm next to an engine or motor. So it allows me as a person with a loud voice to bring down my audio gains. So if you have a low voice and a high voice and you want to match your audio, 32-bit float lets me bring down this audio for me. I bring up her voice and we don't cause any noise. There's no noise, no hissing, so my audio is always up here, and most people's audio is down here. And when I'm doing uh, editing and post, obviously you want the audio to be same. 32-bit float. Also has time code. So the biggest thing if you're doing one camera, two cameras, three cameras, four, time code is extremely important. So now it's after sunset, and the cool thing, if you can see this, uh, this is my newest design rolling interview stand which I'll be bringing with me to the NAB show. It is the quickest stand I have ever used. Uh, it has handles. You can go from a couple like two feet up to six foot eight within a second. It goes up and down. 
when I move it, which I'll do now, which I'll I'll do this. So we'll do this. We're going to bring it down, and we're going to walk away, just to give you an example. And what I'll do is I'm going to do this. We are also going to do a test to see how far I can go and lose the signal. I want to do a test on the bad conditions of being outside on this road with uh, this road, this little sidewalk side road is like me being out on the street. So the NAB show or any indoor show will be more smooth than this. So, and I'm just going to go as far as I can. I'm going to go farther than I expected. I would never, ever, ever be this far away. But the cool thing is I'm going to go a little bit away from light of sight. And I'm going to turn around. And I'm just going to power walk away. So we are now just rolling down the, rolling down the street leaving the Exun 4K Master or Master 4K, the Exun Master 4K in my DJI Pocket 3. I am now leaving it behind out of sight. And you can see as I turned around, I am walking away and I do not see the Master 4K. And I'm going to actually go to this 25 mile an hour speed and then we're going to have the DJI Pocket 3 as an example of how far out of out of light of sight, how far we could be. So I don't see it. And let's walk together. Now, the one thing I'm going to do is with this stand is I can really see the stand being a video centric dolly for movement shots, like what I did with Jessica while we are walking. For this time that I roll from here to there, tell me what, tell me uh, about your YouTube channel. Okay. And so as we're rolling that way, so come this way. As we're rolling, <laughs> talk, see, so look at the lens okay, look. and go, walk backwards. Okay, okay. So last summer I was awarded um, a scholarship by the State Department to study Arabic in Morocco. I was placed in the city of Marrakesh with a cohort about 25 other high school students. And all we did for six weeks was learn Arabic, immerse ourselves in the culture of Morocco, um, live with our host families, and generally just learn more about international life. So I decided to log it because my parents were begging me to find some way to document my time there. They felt lonely. Um, <laughs> and so I made an eight part series just interviewing my classmates, interviewing my host family members, and showing the audience what Morocco looks like and what the culture is like and what the language is like, because I think it's beautiful and it deserves to be seen more. And now it's kind of like a living reminder of my experience. Keep on walking that way. And that's just my YouTube channel summed up. Tell, can you tell us a little short story about uh, one of the families you stayed with? Okay, so yeah, my host family that I stayed with um, was actually quite religious and slightly more conservative than the other host families. So both my host sisters um, wore the hijab and my host mom did as well. And I guess a little fun story is that there's a specific part in a Muslim household called in Morocco called the salon. And there's a curtain um, covering the whole salon and whenever veiled women enter the salon, they can draw the curtain and take off their um, hijabs. And the men outside, when they see that the curtain is drawn, they know that veiled women are in there, and so they don't enter. So it's kind of like a little girl room for my roommate and my host sisters to hang out, and I really enjoyed it. So either I need to have uh, pneumatic wheels, which is smooth out. But right now I just have mic, it's, uh, I have mic roll jitters. But the cool thing, it has about an inch, inch and a half of... Uh, it has about an inch, inch and a half of uh, shock. And right now, I'm not, pu I'm, I actually just, I'm not pushing down on the stand. So I'm giving the stand, uh, it's 
inch, inch and a half of uh, shock, which I'm going to be excited to see if this stand uh, with its one, one and a half inch of shock smooths out the footage. Because if I'm able to do a walk and talk video with this, uh, this is going to be a whole new game for me being able to do walk and talk videos and not have to carry the FX6 and all this weight. It would be basically a rolling dolly that is unlimited of distance. I don't have to be on a track. I don't need any poles. So this thing is going to be, uh, this is beta version, and this is going to be, uh, I think, a huge hit at the NAB show.